I have read 92 books in 2024, but out of those 92 books, only 23 of them have been five stars. Now, I don't feel like I'm asking for too much when I'm looking for a five star book, but like, I just want good characters, a good plot that keeps me entertained the whole way through. I want a book that makes me think and that makes me feel and that is more than one dimensional. Like, I just, I don't feel like I'm asking for too much, but maybe I am. But also I'm not willing to lower my expectations because obviously what I'm looking for does exist. I just feel like I haven't been looking in the right places. So for this video, I thought that I would go through the books that I feel, I wholeheartedly believe will be five stars when I read them. We have a couple of mangas, a couple of fiction books, a couple of romance books, and these, I kind of picked them out because I had a little look-see. I looked through all of my five-star books so far, and most of them have either been manga, romance, or really emotional literary fiction. So with that in mind, let's go through some of the books that I feel like could be potential five stars. And if these aren't five stars, then... What should I do? Should I just like deactivate my channel? <laughs> like something insane. What should I do if one of these books isn't a five star? Because I feel like there should be a, like a type of punishment, like a type of consequence to being wrong in this. Let's brainstorm. But for now, let's go through the very first book that I think will become a five star. The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. This is the sequel to The Stolen Heir, which is Holly Black's latest duology in the Cruel Prince universe. And in this book or this series, we are following who? I, I swear I know who we're following. Prince Oak, which is the half brother of Jude from the first trilogy, okay? Listen, I did read The Stolen Air, it's just been a while. Yeah, we're following Prince Oak and he has his own set of trials and tribulations that he has to go through. And I really, really enjoyed The Stolen Air. I feel like I got a lot of mixed reviews, but I was definitely on the side of the more positive ones. And I feel like Holly Black just knows how to write finales. And I loved Queen of Nothing, which is the final, book in the Cruel Prince trilogy. So I feel like I'm just really going to enjoy this. Plus it is on my list of most anticipated releases of 2024. So I feel like my excitement plus the talent of Holly Black, it's just like a perfect mixture of a five star book. I really hope I just haven't jinxed myself because if this isn't a five star, I'm going to be so disappointed, but I feel like it will be. I just it feels like a five star, it smells like a five star, it looks like a five star. Like if it's not a five star, I don't know who I am, okay? Like I just don't know who I am because I like I, I can feel it. I can feel that this is going to be a five star and if it's not, it's going to be very, very close to being a five star, but that would just be depressing. <laughs> so yeah, the very first book that I think will be a five star is The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. When will I read this? Probably next month, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, August, this is going to be read in August. So the next book is Vinland Saga, the deluxe edition book three. Yes, this is book three. And the reason that I think that this is going to be a five star is because book two was a five star and book one was a 4.5. So as you can see, we've been, you know, it's like slowly rising. And I feel like after book two, the story can only go up. I feel like it's only going to get better and more intense and the characters are just going to get more interesting and more detailed and more human and more complicated. And you know that I love some morally gray complicated characters. So I feel like Vinland Saga book three is just definitely going to be a five star. And if I could, I would probably give it more than five stars. But in order to not break the scale, this is definitely going to be a five star. I've been talking about my love for Vinland Saga for a couple of months now and it's this is one of those series that just kind of like creeps up on you like you do not expect to love this book or this series as much as you do but as soon as you sit down to read these editions it's like you can't stop reading until you finish it and it's so rewarding it's so entertaining it, you're constantly like wanting more and it delivers like this author makoto yukimura he constantly delivers and he's constantly setting the bar higher and higher so i literally cannot wait to read this book because i just know i just know it's going to be a five star like i'm not even 
There is zero doubt in my mind. I am 100% sure that this is going to be a five star. So this next one, <laughs> I, I will be honest. I am not 100% convinced that this is going to be a five star, but I do like to hope. Okay, I am a hopeful romantic and I have like this is the thing. Okay, I've read Books by this author. I mean one of my all-time favorite classics is by this author But then also I've read other works by him and I'm like, oh my goodness. This should have stayed in the drafts so when I'm including humiliated and insulted by mr. Fyodor Dostoevsky I'm doing it with a little, just a tiny bit of trepidation because yes, Crime and Punishment is one of my all-time favorite classics, but at the same time, this is the same man who wrote the Brothers Karamazov. So you just never really know because like I adored Crime and Punishment. I loved Notes from the Underground, but um, I didn't particularly enjoy the Brothers Karamazov and that other book that I read it's not demons, it's the other one. <laughs> ¿Cuál fue el otro que no me gustó? Oh, The Idiot. Okay, yeah. The Idiot, it was okay. Through Dostoevsky, I've literally experienced my entire rating system because like there are some books where I'm just like, oh, you're a two star. But then there are others where I'm like, oh, you're a three or you're a 3.5 or you're a 4.5. So, you know, Dostoevsky has made me feel so many things in so many different scales. So to say that I'm interested to see how I'm going to feel about humiliated and insulted could is probably the biggest understatement of the year because I've been craving a Dostoevsky novel for the longest time. I think the last Dostoevsky novel that I read was back in January and it was Demons and I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like earth shattering, world changing type of novel that I was looking for. And I have heard that Humiliated and Insulted is better. And I have it on good authority that I'm definitely going to be enjoying this one. Just like, okay, listen to this and tell me that you're not immediately intrigued. Humiliated and Insulted plunges the reader into a world of moral degradation, childhood trauma, unrequited love, and irreconcilable relationships. Like, come on now, how do you not want to read this immediately? And it's not that long. It, oh my god, it's not even 400 pages. This is 300, not even, these are notes. This is 356 pages. I almost read the last line, but I didn't. Oh my god, we have pictures, shut up. The man himself, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have his entire family here. That's a little bit, um, what's that word? When you're like, okay, this is Dostoevsky's writing. How do you understand a single word? I mean, it is in Russian, but still. <laughs> How, I don't, that is disgusting. Like not, like no, disgusting in the sense that I can't understand it. How? Wow, that's actually insane. <laughs> Last year, on the evening of 22nd March, I had a most unusual experience. For sure, I'm hooked. I'm in. It's reeled me in. Oh my, wait, should I read the first sentence of The Prisoner's Throne as well? Not a villain saga because it's a manga, so it's different, but let's see what it says here. Oak jammed his hooves into velvet pants. See, what was that? Like, that doesn't hit as hard as this. So maybe I'm going to be reading Humiliated and Insulted before The Prisoner's Throne because the first sentence, I don't think the first sentence of a book says a lot about the book, but it does set the tone and the overall mood. So there we go. That's just a random thing that I wanted to do. Okay, so next up we have some manga because like for sure, like absolutely. This is a series that I've been watching and a series that I've been reading and I've been loving it. Like I'm just obsessed with the characters, with the story, with the plot, especially the anime. I feel like the animation is so beautiful. It's so stunning. Mixed in with the soundtrack and the voice actors, it's just become my newest obsession. And that is Kaiju number eight. This is volume three because I've read the first two volumes and this is the next one up on my list. And I'm just so excited because I just know it's going to be amazing and i think that for this volume we are still in like the anime territory like i've probably already seen this on the anime but i'm not mad about that Ugh, i love her okay i love her that's the girl on the cover i love her <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, I'm just so excited. Volume 2 was a 4.5 out of 5 star and Kaiju number 8 is just like Vinland Saga where the story just keeps getting better and better. So that's why I feel like volume 3 of Kaiju number 8 is going to be a 5 star. And if it's not, maybe volume 4 will be a 5 star, but this is, yeah, this is definitely like very, very close. Or like it's going... It's going to be a five star, okay? Why am I doubting myself? It's going to be a five star. And then the other manga that I think is going to be a five star, and I say this because the previous volumes that I've been reading of this series have been stellar bangers, 10 out of 10s. It is Chainsaw Man. This is volume 13. I don't know who this character is. I don't know if I'm supposed to know who this character is. I hope she hasn't been introduced because I don't really remember her or like recognize her. But there we go, Chainsaw Man, volume 13. Oh my goodness, what's happening? Okay, I'm just very, I miss Chainsaw Man. I remember seeing the anime when it first came out and it instantly became a new obsession for me and then I started collecting the manga and the manga is like twice as good as the anime. I'm just excited to keep reading this story. I'm just so convinced that this is going to be a five star. I just need to be in like the perfect mood to read manga. So there we go. We have these two manga volumes that I am 100% convinced or like 98% convinced are going to be five stars. This next book, <laughs> this is this is another one where I'm like 50% sure it's going to be a five star, but I would like to believe that it will be a five star. And if it's not, I'm still pretty sure that I'm going to love it. And that is The Room on the Roof. Can I, sh yes, by Ruskin Bond, Ruskin Bond, yes. Madness and freedom and violence were new to him. Loneliness was familiar, something he understood. So this was actually sent to me and the person that sent it to me, thank you Shaz, she said that it's a beautiful depiction of friendship and it's also a perfect book to read when you're in the mood to just sit down and read the entire book in one sitting. Also when it's like rainy out and I feel like lately it's been raining a lot here in the Dominican Republic so I feel like I'm just in the mood to read one of those books where it's just cozy, not a lot happens but it has some very meaningful messages and it's just a good time and it makes you feel things. So I feel like this is going to be one of those books and I am very very excited because I actually shared the video where I'm unboxing this on my Instagram and a lot of people were saying that they love this book so I'm excited and it's also not that long at all it has like less than 200 pages maybe this has 191 pages so that's totally doable the light spring rain rode on the wind into the trees down the road it brought an exhilarating freshness to the air a smell of earth a scent of flowers it brought a smile to the eyes of the boy on the road that is a beautiful first sentence shut up oh my goodness <laughs> the room on the roof by ruskin bond please be a five star or if you're not a five star please be good to me <laughs> please be good to me the next two books i don't own unfortunately because i am still unfortunately on my book buying ban i'm only missing one more book to end my book buying ban and that book is oliver twist by charles dickens it's like a 400 plus page classic i don't know if i'm going to have time to read it but um i'm so close to the finish line i can taste it so i'm staying positive but right, right this second, I'm not very positive. But overall, I'm staying optimistic. So I don't own them physically, but I do have them on my Kindle. And the very first book is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Let me explain. Okay, this is like a whole thing. Like I need, if you're not sitting down, please sit down because this is, this is gonna take a while to explain. So um, I was just scrolling on TikTok as you do. You know, I was just, procrastinating the things that I actually had to get done and I was just scrolling through TikTok and I found this one video <laughs> by this one person who was just reading a quote out loud from this book Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez and when I heard that quote I was like this is I need to read this like that sounds like the makings of my new favorite book I absolutely need to have this book. I need to read it. I need to devour it. But then I found out that Just for the Summer is the third book in this type of series. It's not really a series. It's like a companion series. Like you can read each one individually, but it's best if you read them in the same order so that you don't spoil yourself. You know how companion series work. But the thing is, 
Just for the Summer is the third book in this series and the very first one was Part of Your World and the second one is Yours Truly. So here's the thing, I had Part of Your World, I actually have it with me right now. I have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, look at that. Um, and I've had this since 2022 and I never picked it up. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, but the thing is, I read it in preparation for just for the summer and this ended up being a five-star book. Absolutely bonkers. I was not expecting that. But I also wasn't expecting Abby Jimenez to become a new favorite author. So, you know, you have to leave room for the unexpected and Abby Jimenez is definitely like the most unexpected thing that has happened to me in 2024. I've already read yours truly and now I'm missing just for the summer, which is the book that I think is going to be a five star. But here's here's the thing, okay? Like I need to give you guys all the details because I just need to share everything. So part of your world, this was a five out of five star. It absolutely changed my life. I loved it so much. I laughed, I cried, I connected with the characters, I related to their struggles, I related to what they were saying and their feelings and emotions and everything. It was just glorious, okay? Part of your world was glorious. And then I started yours truly. And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. We've got some fake dating. We've got some, it was just like so many elements of all of my favorite romance novels were included in yours truly. But then there's this one thing that Abby Jimenez did that I just wasn't really a fan of. And she continued that trope <laughs> for like a hundred pages. And that just ruined the entire experience for me. Like I loved 70% of yours truly. If it hadn't been for like that 10%, of the book, it would have been a five out of five star. But since I hate the miscommunication trope so much, I bumped it down to a 3.5. So here's the thing. <laughs> I have a five star and I have a 3.5 star. So I don't really know what just for the summer is going to be, but I'm really hoping that it's leaning more towards part of your world type of book. And I just really wanna to get to those quotes that I listened to on TikTok because it's just, you don't understand the, the chokehold that those quotes had on me. Like when I heard them for the first time, I literally got so emotional, I teared up. I don't know why that was. Like, I, I mean, probably I was being a little bit dramatic and like overly emotional, but again, that's just me. So yeah, just for the summer, I have so many high hopes for just for the summer. And I also have so many high hopes for Abby Jimenez's other books, Abby Jimenez. She better not let me down because if she does, I'm going to be very upset and I'm probably not going to be able to trust anyone for a long time. Abby Jimenez, just for the summer, that is a five-star prediction. If it's not, I will be deactivating my channel. <laughs> That's how serious I'm taking this. The other book that I sadly do not own, but I do believe is going to be a five-star is... Business Casual by BK Borison. Let me explain, okay? I have so much explaining to do, it feels amazing. Okay, so Business Casual is the fourth book of a series, and this series is called Love Light Farms, and I read the first three books as soon as they came out. I read them all in one sitting, and it was the randomest thing as well because I was just scrolling through TikTok, not TikTok, I was scrolling through Instagram, and I saw this random edit of the first book, Love Light Farms, and I was like, oh my god, that looks so cute. Um, it is the middle of summer, and it's, this is kind of like a Christmas book, but I don't care. <laughs> it's never too early to read a Christmas book, so I, I literally, I was not planning this at all. I just bought it, I read it, and I was like, I can't stop reading this until I finish it. And so that's exactly what I did. The point is, I read the first three books back to back in one day, and it was probably one of my craziest moments, but it's also one of my happiest moments. And I've been looking forward to business cash for the longest time ever since it was announced and it's finally published like I think it came out recently and I'm so excited you don't understand how excited I am to read Business Casual. It's the, it's like the best timing because I'm in the biggest romance mood. If you haven't noticed, like I've been reading Abby Jimenez like crazy. I don't know, I just feel like Business Casual is going to be everything that I'm looking for and I'm just really excited to read it. If you couldn't tell, like I just know I'm going to love it. I don't even know what it's about. I really don't know what tropes we're getting. I don't know which characters we're following, but I'm just excited to be back in the Love Light Farms world because I loved the first three books so much. Literally every single one is a five star. So I feel like the fourth book is just going to complete 
the whole quartet, if you will. So yeah, business casual, another five-star prediction. If it's not, I really don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Like that's going to break my heart. I don't really have any other five-star predictions because I like I do have to admit that I'm very stingy with my five-star ratings. Like I don't just give it out to anyone. I mean, I have given five-star ratings to the majority of my one piece volumes, but it's one piece. So I feel like that's understandable <laughs> but like in terms of normal fiction books it's really hard for me to find a five star so i'm really excited about these five star predictions i'm also low-key scared because if they're not five stars i don't know what to do with that information but it's definitely going to be interesting to get through these books and see if i actually know my own reading tastes so let me know in the comments below if there are any books that you think would be five stars for me. Like you guys know my reading taste as much as I do at this point. Like you know I love romance, you know I love characters that make me feel things and that may not always be on the right side of the moral high ground, I guess. Like basically morally gray characters. If you have morally gray characters, if you have an interesting enough story, if you have beautiful writing, like, I really don't ask for much. <laughs> um, I feel like it's doable. So if you guys have any recommendations, please leave them down below. And maybe I'll even do like a challenge where I read all the recommendations you guys leave in this video because I feel like that would be exciting. Like, let's see how much you truly know my reading tastes. So I look forward to reading your recommendations. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would really appreciate if you left a like or commented or... Honestly, whatever you feel like doing. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. I host readathons, reading sprints, and a monthly book club. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you, the link is down below, as always. If you're still here, thank you so much for sticking until the end. It truly means the absolute world to me, and it helps me more than you will ever know. So thank you for sticking with me through it all. I love you very, very much. I hope you're having a fantastic day whenever you're watching this, and I will definitely catch you next time. Bye. Hey, Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.